everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm happy to have you here with me today where we are going to make a recipe out of the Amish cooking cookbook that my friends Tim and Carol sent to me. Thank you guys so much. I really, really like this cookbook. I've made several recipes out of this cookbook already. And one of the things that I like about it is a lot of the recipes in here are very similar to the way that I already cook. And there's wonderful tips and uh, suggestions in this cookbook, which is one of the things that I love about older cookbooks the most. And Tim and Carol know this about me and they actually tabbed all of the sections in the cookbook that are like that, that have the tips and the, or the stories or whatever. And at the beginning of the bread section, it says, I don't think there is another section in this cookbook that will be as interesting to the average mother as the bread section. Bread is the most important item on the family table. At one time, it seemed to have lost its honored title as the staff of life because of the refined ingredients that went into it. But in the past few years, many mothers have been conscientious of giving their families the very best nutrition and have turned again to the use of whole wheat flour. And then it goes on equally as wonderfully as that. And each section is like that, but also has just tons of really great uh, tips and tricks. Like there's the bread hint section. Some recipes call for cake yeast and others for dried yeast. This is interchangeable. One package of yeast is the same as one cake yeast. Oh, I've never used cake yeast before, so I wouldn't know that. If bulk yeast is used, one tablespoon of yeast is used for one package. And then it goes on with just tip after tip after tip. And some of them aren't relevant for the day and age that we're living in now, but most of them are. And they're fantastic. I've already learned a few things out of these and I've been cooking for a long time. So I highly recommend old cookbooks like this, especially if you are just learning how to cook. The only thing about, particularly with Amish cookbooks or Pennsylvania Dutch cookbooks, I do have a couple of those. Some of them make some assumptions that you will have some basic cooking knowledge. For instance, the recipe that I'm going to be doing today doesn't actually tell you how many loaves the recipe makes. It makes the assumption that based on the ingredients, you're going to have some kind of an idea about that. But once you've used a few recipes out of old cookbooks, you'll kind of get the swing of it. Also, a lot of these recipes use really simple ingredients because back when they were written, there weren't a lot of the um, more exotic kind of ingredients that we have access to today. And since this is the way that I I cook in general. I really love the old cookbooks there. They are my preference for sure. So what we're going to be making today is the oatmeal honey bread out of that cookbook. I have already made it once and it was delicious. So I wanted to share it with you. And then we are going to make some chicken fettuccine. I already made some noodles earlier today. I am very much enjoying making pasta as I've shared a couple of times on my videos. And because I have shown making pasta, I think at least twice over the last six weeks or so, I wasn't going to take you through the whole steps of getting to this point. But this recipe calls for two cups of flour, three eggs, and a teaspoon and a bit of salt. Mix that all together, knead it for around eight minutes, and then let it rest for 15 minutes. After it's rested, cut it into four equal parts, roll it out with a rolling pin or with a pasta maker if you have access to a pasta maker. I have an Atlas manual pasta maker, which I am getting the hang of using and I'm actually really enjoying it. I think the first time I tried using it on one of my videos a couple of months ago, I wasn't crazy about it, but I figured it out and I'm really enjoying it now. One of the tips that I can offer you is if you do have one like this is to make sure you flour your blades when you're using the cutting parts of the pasta maker, flour them really well and that way you won't get your pasta gummed up in there and also letting your pasta dry out just a little bit once you've rolled it out to the thinness that you want it to be before running it in here also helps as well. So I did use the uh, wider noodle one for making these fettuccine noodles. I am really enjoying making pasta a lot and the flavor is just so superior to store-bought pasta. So definitely something that I'm going to continue on doing for sure. So we're going to make a chicken uh, fettuccine and I'm going to show you how I make an Alfredo sauce. And today I'm actually going to be making it with Asiago cheese um, just to try. I, have, I love Asiago cheese in a lot of things and I thought that it might add a 
nice flavor to my Alfredo sauce. So we'll get to that. But first we're going to get our bread going because it needs to rise and then we can work on the pasta while the rising is happening. So let's pull out our recipe because I don't yet have it memorized. This is going to be a recipe that I'm going to continue using because it is a good one. So the first thing that we're going to do is put two cups of quick rising oats in a bowl with two and a half cups of hot water. Let this sit until it is cooled down to just being warm because you don't want to add yeast or anything to this if it's too hot because it will kill your yeast. So I'm going to use my mixer back here so I'll bring you over here and we'll get this mixed up. Several people asking how I'm feeling about the Anchor Shrum mixer because I just recently got this and I absolutely love this mixer. It's fantastic. So we're just going to put our oats right in there. One cup of honey. This calls for two packages of yeast, and so remember in the book it already shared with us that one tablespoon equals one package, so I have two packages in here, or two tablespoons I mean, and now I'm going to add enough warm water to fill this cup measure up. We'll just let that yeast get activated while we add the rest of our ingredients to our bread over here. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more honey because I didn't have quite enough in that jar that I had there. For four eggs beaten. Add in our eggs. And our yeast is nice and foamy now, so we're gonna add in our yeast. So we're going to start our mixer mixing. All those ingredients together. Two tablespoons of salt. Two thirds a cup of oil. And now we're going to add enough flour to this to make a soft dough. And with this mixer, I like just adding one cup at a time until it's mostly incorporated and then add the next one. So once everything has been incorporated into the dough here, it's looking, it says it's looking for a nice spongy dough that's not super sticky, which is where we're at right now. And then it says to let it rise and then to knead it, which I think is interesting. I've never done a bread like that before. I've always done the kneading at this stage but I followed the instructions last time and it did make a really lovely bread. We're just going to cover the top with a little bit of oil so it doesn't dry out and then cover it with our handy dandy cover so that we can just have this rise right in our mixer. I just put my pot on the stove and I'm going to salt it well and then we're going to get our pasta cooking while we make our Alfredo sauce. I just have my pasta water so I'm just going to salt it, let it come up to a boil and get our fettuccine in there. And in the meantime, let's make our Alfredo sauce. Yum! I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil and half a cup of butter to our fry pan. Like I said, I'm going to use some canned chicken and two cups of cream. So I'm not sure if you can see the cream line on there, but I'm going to skim that cream off to add to our Alfredo sauce. I bought myself a couple of new kitchen tools. These little rollers I saw, I don't know where I saw these, but they actually work really, really well. Voila, <laughs> it's like, it's like magic. I am not a big fan of the kind of the traditional garlic press that you squeeze. I find them a bit of a pain to wash and even to get all the garlic out. So I saw one of these and decided to give it a try. 
And they are a little bit harder to use with old garlic like this. So this is garlic that I picked last year, but they still work really well. Can you see that? So I'm just gonna go put this right into our butter and our oil. You can see the green on the inside of my garlic. It's starting to sprout. So easy. I just use the back of my knife to scrape it off. I love this thing, it's fantastic. Is there anything better than the smell of butter and garlic? I don't think so. So I'm just going to cook up this garlic for a couple minutes in this. And then we'll add our cream, let it reduce a little bit, and then add our cheese. There. That looks good. So now we're going to add in our cream. So when we're doing this, we wanna make sure that our cream does not boil or it will curdle. So you just want it to be at a light simmer. And into our salted water goes our fettuccine. And this only needs to cook for a few minutes because it's fresh. There, that's some simmering starting to happen on our sauce. I'm going to add a little bit of parsley to this just to add some green flecks, make it look pretty. Okay, our noodles are just about finished. Now that this has started to thicken a little bit, we're going to add our Asiago cheese. is done. This is so quick. It's a really quick meal. I mean, outside of actually making the noodles. Beautiful Alfredo. Homemade noodles. A little pepper and it's ready to serve. Let's give it a try, shall we? The Asiago is good, but I definitely think that the Parmesan gives it a little bit more of a saltiness and a little bit more kind of a pungent kind of flavor. The Asiago is quite mild, so if you don't like Parmesan because of that stronger flavor, the Asiago might be a really good option for making an Alfredo sauce like this. If you wanted to just whip something together like this really quickly, using the canned chicken is totally fine, but it definitely tastes better with uh, fresh chicken breast, grilled and then sliced up, grilled with a little bit of garlic and butter. Really good. It would be good with shrimp too, like any kind of seafood. Yum. Yum, yum. So we didn't end up putting the camera in because I think that my dogs may have gotten the skunk. Uh, you guys were asking why I thought it was a skunk. I actually could smell skunk in there, not like a skunk had sprayed, but a skunk had been through there. And we've just been locking up the chicken coop at night and actually closing the interior door. So there's an outdoor run in our chicken coop, that spot. And then there's the indoor part and we've been closing the door on the inside. And this morning, I think there was six or seven eggs in there, which is good. It's going to take the hens a little bit of time to kind of get going again, because when there's a predator issue, good morning, Oakley, when there's a predator issue, um, it stresses the hens out and then they don't want to lay. This is Oakley. It just occurred to me that it wouldn't have been the dogs that got the skunk because I would be able to smell skunk on them if it had been them. So who knows? Either way, he's moved on, which is a good thing. <laughs> is that your cow? Hmm? 
You love your cow, don't you? Are you able to get in there? Thank you. This is our rabbit tractor. You can see our rabbits in there. So we're going to be able to actually move these guys outside probably in about a week as soon as the ground is dry. And then they'll be able to spend the next six months outside. Hey Nala, how you doing? So I'm going to start weaning my sheep off the grain. Where is my scooper? <laughs> Just occurred to me as I'm using my hand to scoop this up. In the next couple of weeks. Fern, do you like cats too? <laughs> Nala, you're such a silly girl. Oak's doing his job. Look at this. Our young man he is nursing off his mom. So that's fantastic news. And so is our little cupcake. Hey, cupcake. Boy, you're certainly not lacking in the food, are you, Baba? And you look fantastic. Nice and fat and healthy. You are doing a wonderful job, Hazel. My goodness. <laughs> Friends, this has got to be some kind of miracle. <laughs> Prim, were you just standing for your baby? Or just distracted? Yep, just distracted by the grain. <laughs> That's okay, whatever works. He's certainly not lacking in feed. I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but we do have the shearer coming to shear these very dirty sheep. And I'm honestly not even sure if these fleeces are going to be salvageable. His will be, so this guy, this is our ram. And you can see what a totally different coat he has. And he is not nearly as dirty. It just doesn't seem to collect the hay the same way that theirs does. So I'll be keeping his for sure because it's so soft and beautiful. But I'll find some creative use for these fleeces if they are too dirty for me to do anything with as far as turning them into fiber arts of any kind. You seem to be redeeming yourself somewhat. So Prim, for those that are new, has been not a great mom at all. I had to pen her in a really small pen for a few weeks with her baby and then when I put them out here, she was not letting him nurse. Either he's just been so persistent that she's given up or she's decided that she wants to be a mama. So that's great news. The fleeces on the kitchen table, it's only taken three days, are now ready to be picked. So I can have my kitchen table again. We've been eating on the desks and the stairs and all over the place for the last few days. It's been a little bit too cold to put them outside. And I just got an email yesterday from the place that I ordered my carding machine from and they have shipped it out. So hopefully it'll be here by next week and we'll have all these fleeces picked through hopefully by then. I can knit and I can crochet. Neither of those things can I do very well. I have done one large crocheting project where I crocheted a blanket right after I had a surgery a couple of years ago. I had time on my hands. <laughs> so I did that and then over the years, I've crocheted a few or knitted a few uh, little teddy bears and dolls and things like that for my kids. But that's about the extent of my skill. So what I would really like to do is to learn how to crochet slippers and do some slippers for my family with this wool. And the other thing that I want to do is do some weaving, make a wall hanging. I have four different colors to work with that are all natural. And I think that would be a really fun project to do. Okay, I'll be back with you guys in a little bit to form our bread loaves. Now my kitchen looks like a bomb went off in it. So I'm gonna clean this up and I'll be back with you when we are going to form our bread. Our dough is ready to form our loaves. I'm just gonna give this, it does say to knead at this point, which like I mentioned before, I have never done before, but I did it last time and it worked out great. So we're just gonna give it a little bit of a knead and then divide this up into 
three relatively equally sized pieces. So now we're just going to let these rise until they've doubled in bulk and then we are going to, or doubled in size, and then we are going to bake them at 400 for 10 minutes and then turn it down to 350 for an additional 30 minutes.